Okay. So in terms of value investing education, you actually played a big role in uh, promoting and advocating value investing from the books to actually you underwrote this class that we talked about where I went to Beijing University, and I think it still survives. Uh, What's your vision for the kind of education that a new investor should embrace and where that education might be available? (laughs) Well, uh, first of all, thank you, Bruce, for uh, coming to uh, uh, teach at the Beijing University Value Investing Classes that my colleague, uh, Gene Chow, and I started uh, six years ago, and now this Six years is still running <laughs> and running very well. And you have played an important role to that. And I think our original inspiration for that class was really based on pretty much your class. And your class is pretty much inspired in the continuation of the Ben, uh, ben Graham's class, and Graham and Don, and which had, uh, among others, um, Warren Buffett as student, and I'm your student. <laughs> there will be many more, <laughs> much brighter <laughs> investors coming after us, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Uh, so we're trying to really uh, uh, do our part to really to pass on both of the philosophy, the thinking, and the practical arts of value investing uh, to the uh, uh, to the next generation, in a sense. Uh, so, in terms of a younger uh, students, when you started today, so I think a few things will be important. Um, when I when I talk to young students and people who started out uh, um, trying to get into the field, I say several things that is important. A to always adopt a owner's mentality, and so I like to really. Ask uh, a young student or an analyst at our firm basically to imagine that all of a sudden that uh, one of your unknown uncle <laughs> died and handed over 100% ownership to the company to you. And that's the business you're going to study. <laughs> so, any company think starting point that way. And once you really kind of think in your own 100% of it, your mentality is totally different. So you never know that business existed. Now you're 100%. You have no idea how to run it. You don't know the people who run it. What do you do? You want to know everything. Everything you can possibly get your hands on. And a lot of the things you know, you don't understand. You just know the facts. You don't understand it. But that's okay. You're going to continue to learn until you get a handle of it. And even if then, because of the constant change, you're going to continue to evolve your knowledge of it. Now, if you adopt that mentality, study any businesses, you have really started the process of becoming real value investor. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you really want to maintain intellectual honesty. And that is very, very, very important. You have to be really honest of what you know, what you assume, what you pretend uh, subconsciously, <laughs> and what you don't know. Um, as how do you really know uh, that? Uh, one of the things that Charlie have talked about that uh, I think make the most sense is it was said that I'm never entitled to have a view until I can find the smartest people on the planet who took the other side of that view. And I can argue better <clears throat> that opposition than he does. And when I can do that, I would be entitled to have a view. Same thing uh, and applies to um, investing in the sense that intellectual honesty is a good life philosophy to begin with. It is a critical, it is a vital when it comes to investment. Because as I said, the, the security market almost exists to really point it, <clears throat> to really to find your weaknesses, your dishonesty, your pretension, um, <clears throat> your bushy mushy knowledges. <laughs> and if you do not really possess that fundamental attitude of intellectual honesty, you'll be destroyed at some point during, this, uh, during your career by the financial market. It was almost designed that way to catch you. Can I can I so, say something about that? Because it was better sure. than designed that way. Okay. Every time you buy a security thinking it's going to do well, 
Somebody else is selling you that security, thinking it's going to do badly, and vice versa. And one of you is always wrong. So you better be sure that you're the one that's on the right side of that transaction. Yeah, well, it, it, it is, it, there is some zero-sum aspect, but not always. Oh, no, it's 100% zero-sum. <laughs> the average return to all investors in any asset class and therefore in all those asset classes is the average return to all those assets. It was just to take a slightly different view, but I'm never going to argue against my professor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say. Just, let's just agree with disagree. On that okay. Point. That's uh, okay. That's fair. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> it is a fair point. It is a fair point. It's and brutal. the third thing I would say is that uh, you, you, you want to really devote as much time as possible uh, to a study of the history of the businesses and the history of great businessmen in the past. The more you study more companies, the better you are when it comes to judgment on good opportunities and the judgment about the fundamental characteristic of the company you're interested in. And so I say all three things are important to start with the 100% owner mentality, to continue to train yourself to have a high degree of intellectual honesty. And lastly, to be a really a thorough student of the history of the businesses. All three things are really going to be very helpful if you are beginning uh, to get into the uh, field of investment or you want to really improve your game. So that's my, <laughs> my advice to understand. Good advice. I'm not going to argue with that. 